Yes, hello there and welcome to this class. Now in this class, I want us to look at a chemistry form two paper and let's begin from the first question. So the first question is asking, define the term chemistry. So as we all know it, we know that chemistry this is the study of structure, properties and composition of matter and the changes that matter undergoes. So that is the full definition of chemistry. As well, you can see that chemistry is the study of matter and its properties. So that is the shorter definition of chemistry, but you can say chemistry is the study of matter and its properties, which includes solids, liquids, and gases. So in Form 1 chemistry, you know, uh, we, we studied about the three states of matter, but we looked at solid, liquids, and gases. And as you can see, we saw that the solid particles are closely packed together, the liquid particles are fairly packed together, and the gas particles, we saw that they are very far apart. Now, this formed the basic principle of kinetic theory of matter, if you can be able to remember. Whereby, in kinetic theory of matter, we saw that matter is made up of tiny particles that are in constant random motion. So, if you could remember, we also studied that in the kinetic theory of matter. Therefore, basically, it means that in chemistry, we basically measure our facts on the different states of matter, uh, looking at them in different angles. So remember, the full definition of chemistry, therefore, is that chemistry is a study of structure, properties, and composition of matter, and the changes that matter undergoes. As well, the shorter definition of chemistry will say that chemistry is the study of matter and its properties, which include solids, liquids, and gases. So that is the first question. Now, let's go to the second question. So the second question is asking, how many elements are present in the following compounds? So how many elements are present in the following compounds? And the first compound we can see, we see that we have ammonium carbonate. So how many elements are present in ammonium carbonate? So the element present in ammonium carbonate, first of all, for us to know how many elements are there, we must first of all write the ammonium carbonate in a chemical formula fashion. Because if we only use the, uh, the word formula, it will be very difficult for us to know how many, like how many elements really make up ammonium carbonate. So first of all, we must break it down or we must write it in chemical formula fashion. So how do we write ammonium carbonate? So for us to write the, uh, this ammonium carbonate, we must first of all identify the radicals that we have in this compound. So remember... In Form 2, we studied that radicals, these are elements reacting as a unit. So those are what we said are radicals. So the elements or atoms reacting as a unit, those form the radical. Now, in ammonium carbonate, we see that we have two radicals. So the first radical, we have ammonium, and the second radical, we have the carbonate radical. So each radical, remember, has a characteristic valency or charge. So in this case, we know that the valency of ammonium is always one which is only positive. The valency of carbonate is two negative. Therefore, by knowing the valency of ammonium and the valency of the carbonate, it can be now easy for us to write the chemical formula of the ammonium carbonate that we have. Therefore, in this case, the valency of uh, the, the compound, the compound ammonium carbonate can be written as we open the bracket and then you say NH. NH4, then you close the bracket, then CO3. So, why did we say that the ammonium is in the bracket and then we, we indicated two below the bracket? So, this is simply to mean that in forming chemical formulas or chemical compounds, so the element A and element B, for example, they interchange the valencies in order to get the product which will be formed between these two reacting elements. So in this case, we know that the valency of ammonium is 1 and the valency of the carbonate is 2. Therefore, to form now the formula between ammonium and the carbonate, so these two are going to interchange the valencies in order for us to get the final product. Now, in this case, the reason why we have put the bracket uh, on ammonium is simply to mean that the whole of this radical ammonium has taken the 2 from the carbonate. And then, since we don't indicate one anywhere in the, chemical, uh, in the chemical formula, that's why the carbonate has remained only as CO3. So, that is why we have written or we have indicated the bracket. So, we only indicate the bracket in order to mean that this radical has captured the valency from the carbonate, whereby the valency of the carbonate is 2, and then below the carbonate we should put 1, but in chemical formulas we don't indicate 1. So, we indicate values which are now greater than 1. That is 2, 3, 4, and above. 
So in this case, we now know that uh, our formula for ammonium carbonate is open the bracket, NH4, close the bracket 2, and then CO3. So getting back to the question, so the question is asking how many elements are present in the following compounds? So how many elements are present? So we have now our ammonium carbonate. So that is how you write ammonium carbonate in chemical form. So by looking at ammonium carbonate, we see that the two below the ammonium multiplies everything in the bracket, just the normal mathematics. So the two inside the, uh, outside the bracket of ammonium multiplies everything in the bracket. So in this case, we will see that we have two nitrogen because that two, remember, it's multiplying the one nitrogen times two. So it means that we have two nitrogen. Then hydrogen, remember, we have H4. Inside the bracket, we have H4. So we'll say two times EO4. So we have uh, eight hydrogen. And then we see that we have one carbonate and then we have, uh, we have one carbon rather than we have three oxygen. So in this case, the elements present or the number of elements present, we see that we have two nitrogens, we have eight hydrogens, we have one carbon to the outside, and then we have three oxygen also to the outside. So those are the total elements which are present in the ammonium carbonate. So after that, the next question is asking about zinc carbonate, so uh, zinc chloride rather. So how many elements are present in zinc chloride? So this is again simple. So we must first of all identify zinc has a valency of what, then the chloride has a valency of how many. So for zinc, we know that zinc has a valency of two positive, while chloride fr from chlorine has a valency of one, which is negative. So... By knowing uh, the valency of zinc and the valency of chlorine, it is now very easy for us to be able to write the chemical formula or the chemical uh, symbols or the chemical, um, yeah, the chemical formula of zinc chloride. So in this case, it's just like we're reacting zinc with chlorine. If you react zinc with chlorine, remember the valencies of A and B, the interchange. So in this case, we have valency of zinc and valency of chlorine. So the valencies of these two are going to interchange. So the two valency of zinc is going to go below the chlorine and then the one uh, for chlorine is going to go below zinc. In order to get this, uh, the chemical formula of zinc chloride which is ZnCl2. So remember this Cl2, this Cl2, that two is coming from zinc. It means that that is the valency of zinc. And again, since we don't indicate one in chemistry, that's why below zinc we have left it like that. So in any chemical formula, if you see that an element is standing um, on its own like that, it means that below it we have one. So we don't indicate one. We only indicate values greater than one. That is from 2, 3, 4, etc. So getting back to the question we are being asked, so how many elements are present in the compound below, which is zinc chloride? And then the zinc chloride, the formula, remember, we have gotten is ZnCl2. So how many elements are present? So we have one zinc and then we have two chlorine. And that is how easy it is to know the elements present in the different compounds that you have. So going to the third question, so let's look at question number three. So question number three is asking, the table below shows some elements in the periodic table, as you can see. Now this is the periodic table and take note, those letters are not the exact letters or the exact chemical, uh, the chemical symbols for the elements which are being represented. So those are just uh, jumbled or random letters that you are going to use. So the second part of the question is asking, use it to answer the question that follows. And then we are also being told that the letters do not represent, or the letters are not the actual symbols of the elements that we have there in. So let's continue. So as you can see, this is the periodic table that we have. So for the periodic table, we know uh, we see that in group number one, we have P and V. Whereby for group number one, remember we say that they are called the alkali metals. So not alkaline metals, they are called alkali metals. So uh, element P and V, they are in group one which is called alkali metals. So why are they called alkali metals? So remember, in the previous classes we say that group one are called alkali metals because they form very strong basic solutions. So since they form very strong basic solutions, that's why they are called alkali metals metals because of that property they form strong basic solution so after that we see that we have element k which is in group number two so in group number two remember i say that the elements are referred to as alkaline earth metals not alkali earth if you say alkali earth you get it wrong so they are called alkaline earth metals 
So why are group 2 elements referred to as alkaline earth metals? So they are called like so because they are found buried deep inside the earth's crust. So since they are found buried deep inside the earth's crust, that's why the members of group 2 are referred to as alkaline earth metals. So apart from that, you see that we have uh, the element Q and T. So element Q and T, so these are called salt producers or halogens. So these are basically group 7 members and then we have uh, letter R which is in group number 8. So group number 8, they are referred to as the noble gases, they are referred to as the rare gases or they are referred to as the inert gases. So why are they called inert gases? They are called inert gases because once they were thought not to be reactive. So inert means unreactive. So the first name given to group 8 elements was inert gases. So they were first called inert gases, whereby this name was later changed from inert gases to noble gases. So these days group 8 are called noble gases. So uh, like we see, the name inert gases also fits because this group, they are called inert gases, noble gases or rare gases. But why are these why were these elements called inert gases? So they are called inert gases because they were thought not to be reactive. Most of them are unreactive, but some of them were found to be reactive whereby we saw that xenon could be able to react with fluorine. So since xenon could react with fluorine, therefore the name was later changed to noble gases. Noble gases uh, for group 8. So remember the first name they were called inert gases because they were thought not to be reactive. However, xenon was found to be uh, to be able to react with fluorine. Whereby fluorine, you see, it's the most electronegative element, which is a very strong nonmetal. So this very strong nonmetal could be able to react with xenon. So since xenon could be able to react with fluorine, therefore the name of the name of this group was later changed from inert gases to noble gases. So remember, inert means unreactive. So since xenon was found to be able to react, so the name was changed from inert gases to noble gases because some elements were found to be able to react. Now let's go to now the first question uh, in this periodic table. So the first question is asking, an element K has atomic number of 20 whereby we can see element K. So the position of element K, remember, that is group number 2. So we are being told that an element K has atomic number of 20. Indicate this on the grid above. So indicate the element K on the grid above. So for the element K, we're going to indicate it exactly there. But how did we know that element K should fit there and not in a place lambda where R is or Q is or T is? It's exactly where we have indicated. So why did we decide that this element is going to stay there and not anywhere else? So if you have been asked such a question in an exam, the first thing that you should do, so first of all, write the electronic configuration of that element that you have been told. So in this case, we see that we have element, uh, that is element K. So for this element K, uh, we see that we have been told that element K has atomic number of 20. So since this element K has atomic number of 20, so the first thing that you should do, you should first of all, write the electronic configuration of this element K. So for the electronic configuration of element K, we see that the configuration is 2, 8, 8, 2. That is number 20. So 2 for the first energy level, 8 for the second energy level, 8 again for the third energy level, and then 2 for the last energy level to give us a total of 20 electrons that you have been asked that element K has. So as soon as now we have the electronic configuration, so we are going to look at the last value. So the last value is uh, the last value all, always tells us the group number to which this element belongs. So you see that this element now belongs to group number 2. Why? Because the last value is a 2 number. So the last value, remember, in a configuration always tells us the group that the elements belong. And then the number of energy levels. So in this case, we have the first energy level having 2, the second energy level having 8, the third energy level having 8, and then the fourth energy level having a 2. So it means that it has 4 energy levels to mean that it is in period number 4. So that is that. So it is in period number 4 uh, because, of, uh, because of the 4 energy levels. And then it is found in group number 2 because the last value of the configuration is a 2. Therefore, uh, the element K can be found in group number 2. So we locate group 1, group 2, and then we count 
four periods. So it's in period one, period two, period three, period four. So in group two, period four, that is the location of element K, and that's how we have indicated element K as to be on that position on the grid where we have indicated it. So the second question is asking, write the formula of the compound formed between V and S. So write the formula of the compound which is formed between element V and element S. So uh, like you can come to the periodic table and count where this element V is, the atomic number, and element S, where the element S is. As well, uh, like we can just look at the group and the period uh, whereby this element belongs and then we write the configuration in order to be able to get correctly the, the chemical formula that is going to be formed between these two elements. So we have been asked about element V and element S. So, looking at element V, we see that this element V is in period number 4, and then it is in group number 1. So, by knowing that it is in period number 4, then group number 1, so the configuration automatically becomes 2881. So, why did you say 2881? So, the last value of the configuration is always the group number. So, in, since we know that it is in group number 1, so we know that the last value automatically is a 1. Therefore, after that, we can see that it is in period number 4, because if we count... All the periods we see that it is in period number four so it means that the first energy level is full with the electrons the second energy level is full with the electrons the third energy level is full with the electrons and then now the fourth energy level is now the group number whereby this element belongs so in this in this case it means that this element v has atomic number of 19 because if we count two eight that is uh, 10 if we count, if we add again 8, that is 18, and then 1, that is 19. So that the configuration becomes 2, 8, 8, 1. So the next element that we have been asked is element S, whereby for element S we see that it is in period number 3, and then it is in group number 6. So since it's in period 3 and group number 6, automatically you know that this element has atomic number of 16. Whereby since it has atomic number of 16, its configuration automatically becomes 2, 8, 6. So for the element V, we have gotten that it is in period number, it is in period 4, then group number 1. So since it's group number 1, it is easier for this element to lose one electron than to gain seven electrons in order to become stable. Therefore, this element V is going to react by losing one electron. Therefore, the valency of V becomes 1. So for the element S, we know that it is in period, uh, period 3 and group number 6. Therefore, since it is in group number 6, it will mean that it is easier for this element to gain 2 electrons in order to become stable than to lose the 6 electrons in order to become stable. So automatically it means that for element S, it has a valency of 2 negative because it is easier for it to gain the 2 electrons in order to become stable. So the valency of V, remember we have seen that the valency of V is 1 which is positive and then the valency of S is 2 negative. So by knowing the valencies of these elements, therefore it is easier for us now to write the chemical compound which is going to be formed between element V and element S. Therefore, if we react element V, which has a state symbol of solid, with element S, which has a state symbol of also solid, uh, yeah, which has a state symbol of also solid, so you see that these two are going to interchange the valency. So the valency of S is going to go below V, the valency of V is going to go below S. And then remember, since we don't indicate valency of 1, for the element S, we are going to leave it like that to seem blank. But again, remember we say that if you only see an element is blank without any value below it, automatically know the value below it is 1. Therefore, to answer our question, so the question is asking, write the formula of compound form between element V and element S. Therefore, this compound is going to be V2S. It's going to be V2S. So this V2, this 2 means that this is the valency of the S. And then below S we have a 1. Uh, like whereby this 1 is the valency of now the V that has reacted with the S. So that is how to indicate that the, chem, uh, the chemical formula between element V and element S. So the next question, uh, which is letter C, so let's look at letter C. So letter C is asking, which, ele which element belongs to period 2 and group 8? So which element belongs to period 2 and group 8? So this is simple. So we'll just check the periodic table. So count the number of period, period 1, period 2. So we are in period 2. Then we have been told group number 8. So count all the groups up to group number 8 to identify the element. 
So this element will identify this element as element R. So element R is the element which is in period 2 and group number 8. So after that, let's now go to question letter D. So question letter D is asking, write the electronic configuration of the following elements. Now this one was very simple. So write the configuration of the following elements. So the first element is element P. So if you look at the grid, we'll see that the element P is in period 2 and group number 1. So it means that it has atomic number of 3. So since, since it has atomic number of 3, so the configuration in this case is going to be 2, 1, because it has only 3 electrons. So Roman 2 was asking element Q. So for element Q, remember we see that it is in period 2 and group number 7. So since it's in period 2, group number 7, it means that it has an atomic number of 9. So since it has atomic number of 9, so the configuration is going to be 2, 7. So if you add 2 plus 7, you're going to get 9, which are the total electrons for element Q. So apart from that, we go to the Roman 3. So Roman 3 is asking element S. So element S, we had looked at it before. So you see that element S has a configuration of 2, 8, 6, because it is in period 3 and group number 6. So the atomic number of element S is 16, remember? So since it's 16, so the configuration automatically is going to become 2, 8, 6. So if you add 2 plus 8, you're going to get 10. 10 plus 6, you're going to get 16. Whereby 16 now resembles the atomic number of element S. So now apart from that, let's now go to the next question, uh, which is question letter E. So this question letter E is asking, using X and dots to represent electrons, draw the following structure. So using X and dots to represent electrons, draw the following structure. So the first structure we've been asked to draw the structure of element V. So in the periodic table, remember element V uh, has atomic number of 19 and a configuration of 2881 that you have just seen in the previous question. So to draw the structure of element V, you must first of all be able to know the configuration of V. So the configuration of V is 2881. So this is exactly what you are drawing. So 2, the first energy level, draw a circle, then indicate two electrons side by side. You should take note not to indicate electrons following each other on a continuous process. They should be side by side. Why? Because electrons have a negative charge and they repel each other. So you should never draw electrons to be stuck to each other around the energy level. So 2881 is the configuration of element V. So since element V has 2881, so we draw exactly what is in the configuration. So the first energy level has two electrons. So it indicates the two electrons in the first energy level. So after that, go to the second energy level, we have eight. So draw that circle and then indicate eight electrons in the energy level. The third energy level, we also have eight. Draw the circle, indicate eight energy levels. Then the final energy level, which is the largest, indicate only one electron. And that is the structure of element V following 2881. So like apart from that, let's now go to the second one whereby we have been asked to draw the structure of element T. So this, uh, yeah, this element T, we see that it has, it has an atomic number of 17. If you can check the grid again. So it has an atomic number of 17. Now having an atomic number of 17, we see that the configuration for this element will be 2, 8, 7. So that's the configuration of this element, which is 2, 8, 7. So again, using the configuration, we can draw the structure of element T. So draw the first circle and then populate with two electrons, just exactly as the configuration say. So you have two electrons. After that, draw the second energy level, indicate eight electrons, and then draw the last energy level to indicate seven electrons. So that is how to draw the structure of element T.